Hey, Precalc students. Uh, today we're going to talk about rates of change. So uh, you guys have probably heard about average rate of change quite a bit before, but we'll do a quick refresher on that. Uh, so we have average rate of change, and then we also have instantaneous rate of change that we're going to talk about today. So for average rate of change, that's just the slope between uh, two points on a graph. So um, if I have a function, let's just go with y equals x squared to keep it simple. Um, and I want to know what is the average rate of change. Um, and for here, I'm going to abbreviate it AROC, average rate of change, just because I don't want to write average rate of change a whole bunch of times. Um, so average rate of change from x equals 1 to x equals 2. And it's the average rate of change of f of x equals x squared. Okay. Uh, so on our graph, let's say this is uh, 1 and this is 2. So we know that at 1, 1, that's point there. And then at 2, 4 is our other point. So um, the average rate of change from these two is just a slope between these two points. It's a slope of a line that I would draw between those two points. The secant line is what this is called when it crosses the graph twice. So um, all we have to do is figure out the slope here. So we have you know f of 2 minus f of 1 over 2 minus 1. It's the change in y over the change in x. We remember that. Okay, so in this case, f of 2 is 4, f of 1 is 1, 2 minus 1, so then 3 over 1, which is 3. So my average rate of change from x equals 1 to x equals 2 of y equals x squared, uh, or f of x equals x squared, is 3. All right, so that's average rate of change. Now, instantaneous rate of change is different. Um, because if you kind of think about, um, what if we were to make this point get closer and closer and closer and closer to this point and just keep taking, uh, average rates of change, would it go towards a particular value? And so this kind of hopefully makes us start thinking of limits that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Um, so if I keep, you know, making my points closer and closer and closer and closer, and I keep drawing uh, secant lines that go between, and after a while they start getting really close together. But they do all start kind of going down towards a particular value. They keep getting closer and closer and closer together. Um, so that is our instantaneous rate of change. It's actually defined as a limit. Um, so in order to help us kind of take a better look at this, I'm going to uh, redraw the graph a little bit here because it got kind of messy. Um, so our instantaneous rate of change at, we'll say, x equals 1 is the slope of a line that's tangent to the graph at 1. Um, so the way that we find this is using limits. So the instantaneous rate of change I'm going to call it IROC, instantaneous rate of change, so that we don't have to write that a whole bunch of times, it is defined as the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And this is the, uh, this would give us the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at some value x. Um, so what I would do if I was practically, you know, calculating the instantaneous rate of change, I would replace x with some value that I want to find the instantaneous rate of change at. And then I would replace it in here as well and uh, kind of go from there substituting values from the function. Um, but the problem is right now if I leave it as it is written, if I plug in 0 for h, we end up with a dividing by zero kind of problem. Um, so in all of these where we're finding the instantaneous rate of change, our goal is going to be able to is going to be to uh, work with the top so that we can pull an H out and cancel the H's. So that's going to be kind of the goal we have in mind. But first, let's do an example. Let's do this one. 
um, where we want to find the instantaneous rate of change of y equals x squared at x equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to erase this so that we can have more room. Okay, instantaneous rate of change. So in here, we're replacing all the x's with 1 since we want to know the instantaneous rate of change of the function at 1. And I know what f of 1 is. f of 1 is just 1 because it's the point 1, 1, right? On our function. So we want the limit. Actually, I can just replace that now. So instead, I'm going to erase that and replace it with a 1 since I know the function value at 1 is 1. Now what we need to do is kind of go back to what we did during first semester with substituting um, values into functions. Since our function is f of x equals x squared, I want f of 1 plus h. So that means I want 1 plus h squared right here. So we've got limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus h squared, since that's f of 1 plus h. And then we have minus 1, and then it's still all over h. So now that we're working with function values, there should be no more x's left in our function. We should only have numbers and h's. Um, so now what we want to do is simplify the top and see if we can make something happen there to cancel out an h. So uh, that would be 1 plus h squared is 1 plus 2h plus h squared. Because remember, we have to double distribute that out. We can't just go 1 squared plus h squared. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of 1 plus 2h plus h squared minus 1 all over h. All right, so now we have the 1 and the negative 1 that can cancel each other out. So we'll get rid of those. And we're left with 2h plus h squared over h. Now I can factor an h out of the top. So we have h times 2 plus h over h. Now we can cancel our h's there. So we're left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 plus h. Now we don't have that dividing by 0 issue, and we can just plug a 0 in for h, and we're good to go. So 2 plus 0 is 2. So our instantaneous rate of change of the function at 1 is 2. So that means that the slope of this tangent line is 2. OK. So that was a, a pretty basic example. It was uh, one with nice numbers and everything. Um, so let's go ahead and try one with numbers that are a little bit less nice. We're also going to talk about a few different uh, vocab words you might hear. OK, so while I'm erasing, uh, you might also hear words like average velocity and instantaneous velocity. So average rate of change goes with average velocity. Instantaneous rate of change goes with instantaneous velocity. Um, and a lot of times, the, the instances that you will hear uh, those words are within uh, word problems and things like that, where you're actually trying to apply it. Um, so yeah, anyway, here we go. We've got, uh, for our next example, we're going to do a runner's distance in a marathon is given by f of t equals negative 1.3t squared plus 12t. So we want to know two things. Over here, we'll put, we want to know the average rate of change of f of t from uh, t equals 2 to t equals 3. And then the second thing that we want to know is the instantaneous rate of change. of f of t at time equals 2. Okay, so we want to know both of those things. So first let's do the average rate of change since that one's uh, simpler. All we need to do for this one is go f of 3 minus f of 2 over 3 minus 2. So in this case f of 3 all you do is take 3 and plug it in for t. Uh, since I already did that earlier, 
uh, we know it's 24.3, or, you know, I did it on my own. You can plug it in with your calculator if you want to verify. 24.3 is f of 3. And then f of 2 is 18.8. And then this is all over 3 minus 2. So then we do the math here. Uh, 24.3 minus 18.8 is 5.5 over 1, since 3 minus 2 is 1, so 5.5. Okay, and a lot of times uh, they'll tell you something about the units, like they'll say uh, this distance is in miles, time is in hours, something like that. Um, so then if it's our average rate of change, this would be an average of 5.5 miles per hour. All right, so um, or they might have asked for average velocity or something like that instead. They might have used those that wording. So anytime you're talking about average velocity, instantaneous velocity, those are all going to be in units per time, uh, units of length per time. So it's going to be miles per hour, meters per second, uh, feet per second, um, inches per minute, you know, all those kinds of units are going to be your rate of change units, your velocity units. Okay, so there's our average velocity or our average rate of change for that uh, runner from time equals two to three. So let's go ahead and do the instantaneous rate of change next. And since this kind of bled over, I'm gonna erase. Okay, instantaneous rate of change. So let's remind ourselves of that definition again of instantaneous rate of change. We've got the limit as h goes to zero of f of, we'll say t this time, since we're dealing with t instead of x, t plus h minus f of t over h. Okay. Um, so for this one, we do, or the first thing we want to do, since we know we want it at t equals 2, we're going to go and plug in 2 anywhere we have a t. Okay. And then, as we saw in the previous portion of the problem, we already calculated f of 2. We know how to find f of 2, just plugging it into a calculator and everything. So f of 2 was really 18.8. So we're going to get rid of this and put in 18.8 instead. And then f of 2 plus h just means that I'm plugging 2 plus h into this function for t. Uh, so I need to plug it in both places where there's a t. So here we go. This is going to look a little bit longer than our last uh, one where we had to plug stuff in here. So we're going to have negative 1.3 times 2 plus h squared plus 12 times 2 plus h. And then we still have our minus 18.8. And then it's all over h. And this is the limit as h goes to 0. Still. Okay. Um, so now what we need to do is simplify everything on the top because we still have this dividing by zero problem if I were to plug in zero right now. So, um, let's see. Remember you, when you square the two plus H, you have to actually double distribute it out. So we should end up, uh, there with four, uh, plus four H, um, plus H squared. Okay, so then uh, we want to distribute this negative 1.3 to all of those things. So that would give us negative um, 5.2 there, and then uh, minus 5.2h minus 1.3h squared. And then we also have to distribute the 12 here. So 12 times 2, 24 plus 12h, and then we still have that minus 18.8 hanging out down there. And this is all over h. Now we have to start uh, simplifying and canceling things. And the nice thing that happens is that negative 5.2 plus 24 is positive 18.8, which nicely and conveniently enough will cancel with our negative 18.8 over here. So I can cancel all three of those terms. 
Then we just need to combine like terms. All I should be left with now is things with an H in them, which is super nice. So now we have negative 5.2H plus 12H. Combining uh, like terms there, we get, uh, what is that? 6.8H. Yep. Uh, and then we have minus 1.3H squared all over H, and it's the limit as h goes to zero. Okay, so now that we just have things with h's in them, we can cancel an h. So if you factor out an h, you can think of it as factoring out an h, or you can think of it as canceling one of the h's from each of the terms. Either way, we get, uh, can we still see this? Let's move over here. This is terrible board work. But anyway, limit as h goes to zero of, we have 6.8 minus 1.3h. Now I can plug in 0 for h. This term goes to 0, and we're just left with 6.8. And this would be miles per hour. So our final answer for instantaneous rate of change of our runner when time is 2 is 6.8 miles per hour. Um, OK, so that's our lesson on average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email, come to office hours, or comment on this video. Um, otherwise, have a wonderful day. See you guys later.